there's a lot of different ways to make kokanee corn and even a variety of corn you can use. A good friend of mine that mentored me for kokanee fishing put me on to the Green Giant Steam Crisp Shoe Peg Corn and I have tried a few other corns mostly because this was unavailable and I was disappointed. A few things I do, I salt the corn to cure it and harden it, I'll show you that. A few different scents that I use, um, I also will use uh, tuna oil out of just canned tuna. And then one thing that I do like to do is I use small containers to put, and the reason I like this is I prefer the fresh corn just right out of the fridge after I've made it, and I'll keep some in the fridge and use it. But then I'll take and make some different kinds, so it's nice to have smaller jars that maybe one I'm doing, you know, bloody tuna, another one I'm doing, um, you know, maybe shrimp and, and anise. So it makes it easy to separate if you're doing some different scents. And then also it's really convenient to, you can just throw these in the freezer and the smaller jars, it's nice because um, when I first pull them out of the freezer, it's nice and firm, it fishes really well. Um, but the more times you put them back in the freezer and freeze them and pull them out, the softer they get. So it's nice to have smaller jars and I'll just grab like one jar or if I've made a couple different scents, maybe I'll grab one of each scent and take them with. So first thing, we're gonna take some, a can of this corn and open it. Okay. Corn's open. I'm gonna drain off all the juice like so. And just any container to put it in. Then to firm it up, I mean they're already nice firm kernels, but the salt really helps to firm it up. I add a few tablespoons of salt, and then I stir it up. Now, this you could leave salted overnight. With this much salt on there, uh, it would really turn those into little raisins. It would dry them a lot. <clears throat> We're just going to give this maybe a half hour, an hour, and come back and see how much moisture has been pulled out of the corn, so. All right, so this has been setting for about 40, 45 minutes. And even though I drained all the fluid off, hopefully you can see, I mean, a lot of fluid is getting pulled off that corn from the salt. And that just makes these kernels, you know, really firm up even, you know, more than those shoe peg corn already are and so we can pour off carefully we're not dumping the corn we can pour off more of this fluid okay and make up some batches so what i'm going to do <clears throat> is i'm going to do a couple different batches mm, mosquitoes that time of year and i think i'll do um one for the freezer and one for the fridge. And that'll cover my kokanee fishing for quite a while. Now I've got kind of bigger jars and smaller jars. And essentially I have a recipe that is my favorite, um, which is the bloody tuna garlic. A lot of guys will stay away from the garlic early season. Um, another mosquito. But I've, I've just been uh, pretty successful with that any time of year. So I don't worry too much about that. You can cure the corn in these little jars as well with the salt. Um, like if you weren't gonna cure the whole can, but I don't worry about that and, and just like to cure it all in one and dump the fluid off. And you're good to go. So these smaller jars, I feel generally right to the top and the bigger jars I don't always fill all the way up so and I can actually do um, a couple more jars and I have some so I'll go get those after but looks like probably two more of these smaller ones actually we're gonna add just a little bit more to these guys Okay, 
So, <clears throat> like I said, you can use just tuna oil or even the tuna water right out of the can. Um, I like these Procure scents just because they're really easy. This is Bloody Tuna. You do have to mix these up because they separate it. Um, this one is shrimp and then anise. So, um, like I said, the Bloody Tuna Garlic has been my favorite. You could do all three of them, single um, scents, but what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to combine the shrimp and the anise, and then I'm going to do a Bloody Tuna. And um, like I said, one batch for the fridge, another batch for the freezer, and I'll be covered for quite a while. So I did hear in another video, I think it was actually Tyler Hicks, I don't know if you've seen any of his videos about this, crossing the phospholipid bilayer, bilayer on the corn. And that's resistant to the oils. Um, I have used the oils as well. I'll be honest, the biggest reason I like these water soluble scents is they seem to work really well and they're just not as messy. When you're reaching in and grabbing the corn, your hands aren't getting that oily residue and you know, then you eat a candy bar or a you know, bite of a sandwich or something and it tastes like bloody tuna garlic procure scent. So I do like these um, and it's really cool if they do actually absorb into the corn better um, so that you have more scent. Um, but just another big advantage is they're not so messy and oily. So with these pump bottles, you can get them in other bottles too. It's pretty convenient that, I mean, you can just take and spray, I want to do the big one, a bunch of pumps. And I, um, I put quite a bit of scent in. I mean, I want these things to really get covered well. And maybe I'll mix it up just a little bit. Give them a few more. And simple as that. that that's ready to catch some coconut. So it's just super convenient in these small, jar, small jars. Like I said, you can freeze them. Um, you can label them. These I actually don't have to label. There's enough from the Bloody Tuna. It has the darker color than these other two um, that I can tell them apart even if I have them in the same size jars. But where I typically do the Bloody Tuna in my big jars makes it really easy. And that's making corn. So really straightforward. It works really well. Um, some other options you can do, like Procure makes a kokanee corn cure powder. Um, a lot of those, Shockey also makes some. Um, um, the same company that makes like this corn that you can buy. Um, in those cures, they're usually borax based and they do cure the corn really well, just like you do for curing eggs um, or herring, things like that. Um, but the salt's just really convenient and easy for me. And I actually always have this salt anyway, cause I, I can a lot of kokanee every year. And this is the salt that I use when I'm pressure cooking kokanee at the end of the season. So I just get it out of my canning stuff, make corn, and then in the fall, it'll be ready for me when I want to can a whole bunch of my kokanee from this season. So I hope that this helps and that you get out there and catch some kokanee. And if you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to, you know, comment, ask questions. I'm happy to, you know, answer whatever questions you have. If I don't know, I'll just simply say I don't know. Um, also, please, you know, like and subscribe if you like these videos. Let me know if you have suggestions for other ones. So. Appreciate the support and fish on.